if this report had appeared as it should have on the front of the New York Times about Donald Trump, it would be everywhere. But instead, it was published in the Washington Free Beacon, which has been doing amazing work this entire election cycle. These guys are unafraid to go where no one else will go. And really solid reporting. I mean, they've got staff. They, they dig deep. This is Eliana's publication. Um, and they've got one out today, and it's a doozy about Vice President Kamala Harris. And bombshell new reporting about her past plagiarism. Now, when we had Tucker on, we talked to you briefly about the Chris Rufo report that uh, outlined how she had plagiarized large sections of her book. That got zero pickup by the mainstream other than to dismiss it. The New York Times brought in some expert to say, oh, it's really not serious. And they had only given that expert small portions of Chris Rufo's evidence. And when the guy saw the full evidence, he's like, oh, well, this is more serious than I thought. Jeez, I hadn't seen this when I commented to the Times. And then it was lost into the ether. Well, in comes the Free Beacon with a brand new host of examples of Kamala Harris outright stealing other people's work. This time, uh, they include her service as a California attorney general, where she lifted, according to the Free Beacon, a fictionalized story about a sex trafficking victim and then presented it as a real case to paint her office in a good light. It was a fabrication. She changed it, suggested it was real and her own (laughs) to make her office look good. The incredible investigation comes from Aaron Sibamariam. He's been great at the Beacon. And it includes several different examples that they have uncovered. We're going to walk you through them. The first example is from 2007. She was then DA in San Francisco. She testified before Congress about a bill that would have created a student loan repayment program for state and local prosecutors as an incentive to keep them from leaving public service for high-paying law firms. However, virtually her entire written testimony was lifted from another district attorney in Illinois, half the country away, a man named Paul Logley, who happens to be a Republican. Look at these full screens. It's not important to be able to read them, meaning these are graphics. It's not important to be able to read them because they're in tiny print here, though you can if you go to the Free Beacon. What's important is that you see the highlighted red sections showing it's the same speech. On the left is the testimony from Paul Logley, and on the right is the testimony from Kamala Harris. As the testimony goes on, you can see the majority of it is highlighted in red, meaning it's the same. Per the Free Beacon, the submitted written statements even contain the same typos, such such as missing punctuation or mistaken plurals. One error, a who, that should have been a whom, was corrected in Kamala Harris's version, which the Beacon points out is more damning for her. She went through and tried to like clean it up, knowing it wasn't hers, <laughs> trying to make it sound a little better, but didn't change any of the substance. According to the Beacon, 80% of Harris's speech was stolen. They say copied verbatim from Logley. Okay, now to a different allegation. This one is about sex trafficking. This happened in 2012 when Kamala Harris had ascended to the attorney general spot in the state of California. She released a report titled The State of Human Trafficking in California, 2012. The report touted how many trafficking investigations her office had launched and how many arrests they had made. Per the Beacon, one section of the report included stories about victims of sex trafficking. It told the story of a woman named Kelly from San Francisco. According to the report, Kelly, quote, had lived in a motel where her pimp forced her to engage in prostitution, end quote. But Kelly was able to contact a hotline and local law enforcement helped rescue her from her pimp. The story concluded stating, quote, Kelly is currently receiving services and helping law enforcement to pursue a case against her pimp, end quote. The problem here is Kelly doesn't exist. (laughs) And this case did not happen. At least it didn't happen in San Francisco. It's an invention. The Beacon uncovered Kelly's story was actually from a Polaris project. Polaris is a nonprofit that runs a national human trafficking hotline. Five months earlier, Polaris had posted a series of stories that it said were, quote, representative of the types 
of calls they receive. So here again is the side by side. On the left, you can see Kelly's story from Polaris. Again, just a representative of the types of calls Polaris gets. In the Polaris write-up, Kelly lives in Washington, D.C. And on the other side, all in red, so you can see the same, the similarities, Harris's retelling of Kelly's story as real, only now it's happening in San Francisco, for which Kamala Harris has responsibility. This is unbelievable. She's too lazy to even figure out whether she has a real victim she can, she can talk about when she's stealing somebody else's crime stories. Sex trafficking victims obviously exist. It's actually not hard at all to find them. They do call hotlines to get help. But Harris's office is trying to show that Kelly, as a victim uh, in San Francisco, uh, that, that she reached out to the local authorities there to get safety. And last week, Chris Rufo reported that Harris had plagiarized portions of her 2009 book, Smart on Crime, too. Right? So Harris uses this story, which is invented without realizing that, to make herself look good. And she did the same in her book, Smart on Crime. This is the Rufo reporting. As I mentioned, the New York Times yawned at it, writing in their, hind, in their headline, conservative activist seizes on passages from Harris's book. Seizes. It's a pounce. They pounced. But as more examples pile up, will legacy media have to start paying attention? This has ruined presidential campaigns before, including that of this now sitting president when he was first running for president, back when everyone listening was a toddler. <laughs> In 1987, then Senator Joe Biden's campaign for president ended after examples of his plagiarism and lies were uncovered. Oh, we were so cute then, weren't we? We were quaint. We cared about lying. He was accused of lifting phrases from a British lawmaker and also from Robert F. Kennedy Sr. He was also accused of outright lying to voters about his law school career. And back then, the legacy media did not let him get away with it. Look at this report from Evening Newscasts back when that story happened. Senator Joseph Biden may have more explaining to do. The new questions stem from with taped remarks of, of Biden States. during an April campaign appearance in New Hampshire. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. I mean, think of, think of the balls in doing that. By the way, credit to Newsbusters for finding that old clip. Who, who does that? This reminds me of that cult leader, Keith Raniere, the guy who's now in prison for the rest of his life because he started a cult, again, back in my hometown in Albany, with a bunch of women who he convinced to be sex slaves, and he made people call him prefect. And he said stuff like this about himself. He said he graduated with like a 4.0 and he had a triple major and none of that was true. He had crappy grades. He didn't have a triple major. Like that's who's the sitting president right now. A, a pathological liar about his own biography. And you know what? He chose well for his number two because Kamala Harris appears to have the exact same problem. But does it become an issue for her in the way that that one did for Joe Biden? And we've seen other plagiarism scandals tank careers. Does it exist as a scandal at all if the corporate media doesn't touch it? Look at the Doug Emhoff story, allegedly abusing the girlfriend he was with prior to Kamala Harris. Where's that? No one's covered it. No one. No one. We covered it. Chris Cuomo spent a minute on it. That's it. No one is talking about it. They've done a complete blackout of that story. Why? It was well-sourced. It had three supporting witnesses. It had paper receipts. No, they're not interested because it has the potential to hurt her. So what happens with this one? Four years of crushing interest rates, runaway inflation, and reckless government spending. And who is paying the price? You. You might have bills stacking up, debt collectors on your back. You might be barely able to keep food on the table. Done with debt can be a way out. 
They have developed new aggressive strategies designed to get you out of debt permanently without bankruptcy or loans. Done with Debt stands between you and your bill collectors. They can go head to head with these guys, getting your balances reduced, interest rates slashed, and penalties stopped. They create a plan to end your debt fast and put more cash in your pocket every month. And right now, Done With Debt is accepting new clients. But you do need to act fast. Some credit relief programs expire. Before you even make another payment, consider a visit to donewithdebt.com or call 1-888-322-1054 right now. 1-888-322-1054. Speak with one of their debt relief strategists for free by going to donewithdebt.com, donewithdebt.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.